Did you know you can create a serverless GraphQL backend with no code in just a couple of minutes? Let's take a look. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And one thing that developers love is GraphQL. So in this video, we're going to use the sponsor of this video, which is GraphBase, and show you how cool and easy it is to create a serverless backend, a GraphQL backend, uh, serverless, what other buzzwords do we need to have in just a couple of minutes. So the way this is going to work is we're going to basically just define a schema. We can run this GraphQL server locally. We can then uh, connect this to a GitHub repository, which will deploy to GraphBase. It's out there. It's ready to go, uh, which is really cool. And we'll show you a little bit of extra features where you can have uh, separate environments based on branches in GitHub. So if you want to create a change to your repo and then you, or a change to your model, to your schema, and then test that out in a separate environment from your production environment, you can do that. We'll also have a little bit of automation to import some data into our GraphQL backend. So we're gonna grab information from the Compressed FM podcast. So we're gonna grab it out of Sanity. We'll then add that into our GraphQL backend uh, with GraphBase. So we won't go into details of how that automation script works up front. So if you want to see how that automation script works, we'll show you that at the end of the video to make sure that we can focus first and foremost on setting up the GraphQL server with GraphBase. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to start locally here and I am inside of VS Code inside of a project folder called GraphBase Demo. And we're going to initialize this by using MPX GraphBase init. So this will create a few files for us. Mainly it's going to create a graph base folder and then it's going to have a schema.graphql file inside of here. Now, if you're new to GraphQL, this is basically a definition language for defining our models. You can see we have a to-do, it has an ID, it has a title and a Boolean for complete. Then you have a to-do list, which is basically going to reference an array of to-dos. So this uh, gives us the only code that we actually need for this, which is our model. And from here we can do MPX graph base dev to run this local uh, to run this locally to run the entire uh, thing locally. So we have a playground at uh, port 4000. So I'm going to open this up uh, in the browser and just go over to local host for thousand. And this is going to gra open up our GraphQL Explorer. So inside of here, we can uh, write a query. We can also ski see ski see our schema. Uh, so we can see our schema and then we can see the documentation for the stuff that it already created for us. So you can see we've got queries here for querying an individual to do for querying a collection of to do's and then the same thing for a to do list and then um, querying an individual to do list and then uh, a list of to do lists. And then also we have our mutations already created for us to create, delete, uh, update all the things for both of those domain models. Really, really cool. All this stuff is already set up for us. Again, we're just running locally. We'll deploy this in a second. So let's go back. I'm actually going to uh, change the schema model and we're going to do a schema model for a compressed FM episode. So uh, for this, it's going to have an ID. Let's get that right. So we'll have an ID. We'll have a title. We'll have a description. We'll have an episode cover, uh, a URL for the uh, cover image, and then we'll have an episode number. Now, if I go into our sanity account for the compressed FM podcast, you can see that this is going to relate back to the details that we track for individual episodes. So episode number, title, somewhere in here is the cover and then uh, the brief description. So the script that I'll explain later, if you're interested, will grab all this information out of Sanity and then upload that to our GraphQL backend. So let's go uh, back to the playground. Let's uh, save this and uh, this will detect a schema change. It's reloading, which means it's going to kind of update all those queries and mutations that we have available to us. And when we come in and uh, I didn't even click refresh, it automatically refreshed. You see now we have those equivalent queries and mutations, but specifically for our episode data model or schema. So if I wanted to now query this, I could come in and I can do, uh, actually, let's just keep what we had and let's do episode collection. We'll take the first five and then for each one, uh, we will just grab the title. So this query, it won't respond with anything because we haven't added anything yet. So I'm going to copy in a mutation to create a test one of these. So let's do this. So this will create just a dummy uh, item here. Uh, I think this is from I actually copy this originally from an article on Dev.2, which is why that's mentioned there. 
And then we can have just dummy information for these pieces. And then episode number is going to be uh, a number instead of a string. So if I save this, it's going to return to us the information about that episode that we uploaded. And then if we go back through our history and into our episode collection and run that, uh, we can use this and run it. We should see that we have one episode in here. Now I'm going to uh, run the script that will grab the information from Sanity and dump that into uh, GraphQL back in here. And we'll see that in a second. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this script. So I've got this open in VS Code as well, and I'm gonna run this with node app.js. And we will uh, create all this stuff. And then if we come back to our uh, actual GraphQL Explorer here, we should be able to query. And now we see that we actually have some of the real data. So we have uh, my origin story, Amy's origin story, the tech behind uh, the podcast and so on and so on. So this is the first 10. We've got a bunch of episodes, so we could query like the first 50. And then we should also see, uh, we can grab other properties like episode number and uh, description and the episode uh, or just the cover. I think I changed this to be just cover instead of episode cover. So there's all the information. Now it's in our GraphQL backend running locally. The question is now, how do we get this deployed to GraphBase and hosted for us? So we'll go ahead and do that. Again, if you wanna see how the script works, we'll do that at the end of the video. So this works uh, great. What we wanna do now is go ahead and kill this server and then we'll, we can do a GitHub repo create. So we wanna create a repository uh, for this repo. And actually I think we may need to do a git init first. So we'll initialize this as a uh, git repository. We will then uh, add everything and say initial commit. And now with the GitHub CLI, let me make this a little bit bigger. Now with the GitHub CLI, we can do uh, GH repo create. I recommend getting the uh, the GitHub CLI. It's very nice to be able to create this from uh, from your terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this repository. We're gonna push an existing local repository to GitHub. So that's what we've already, uh, that's what we just initialized. Uh, we're gonna push this repository that we're currently in. We'll call it graph based demo. Skip the description. We'll have this be private for now and uh, add a remote, yes. Would you like a new remote to be called origin? Yes. Would you like to push commits from the current branch uh, to origin? Yes. Okay, cool. So now if I open up uh, GitHub, I should be able to go to my repositories and see this new repository. So let's open uh, open that up. There's my graph-based demo. Uh, this is uh, working. All right, so there it actually has the code inside of it. So our schema.graphql is here as well. So there that is. And then if we go into uh, back into GraphBase, I'm inside of the dashboard. You'll have a link to sign up for a free account if you want to follow along. I can create a new project here and uh, we're going to import a repository. So we're going to import uh, from the GraphBase demo. And I think we need to add permissions to this. So I'm going to go into my name, do the authorization code or authentication code, sorry, security. Am I right? Uh, so now I'm going to make sure to select that it has access to that repository that I just created. So you could give this access to all your repositories. I just gave the plugin access to specific ones. So I can search for GraphBase. And now we've got our GraphBase demo and I can save this. And that should be good inside of GitHub. So now let's go back and uh, we can now choose our GraphBase demo. So again, this plugin in GitHub needs access to either all of your repositories or specific ones that you want to be able to import. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this repository. Uh, it's gonna be on the master branch. It shows us our schema here. It's gonna go ahead and deploy and we have this entirely uh, entirely deployed a serverless GraphQL backend uh, in just seconds, which is really, really cool. Uh, so deployment is in process. It actually just finished. Really cool. We can also open up the playground. So the same thing that we were just kind of looking at, we can go and see that all this stuff is there. We can make this, uh, take this in a full, uh, in a full page. We can, it actually gives us an example here, another example of uh, where to, uh, or how to create some data. We could then do a query to show that it all works. So all that stuff is fully deployed, which is really, really neat. Uh, one of the cool things I wanna show you is that uh, we have our, our endpoints here and let's go back to uh, the graph-based demo. So we have our endpoints, so we can make queries against this GraphQL endpoint, just like uh, we were doing locally with the script that we talked about. Uh, so we have that, but one of the cool things is we can now make changes to this and uh, create a, a completely separate environment in GraphBase based on uh, branches with our GitHub repository. 
So let's do a uh, get checkout dash B. Uh, B will create a new branch. So we'll say add, uh, what thing do we want to add here? I forgot what, what piece of data I was going to add. Let's see. Uh, the audio path. So this will be the, the path to the actual MP3. So we'll say all oh, add, add audio path. So we're going to add that property. We're going to say audio path here is going to be uh, a string. All right. So we'll save this. We can now do uh, git add star. I've got abbreviations for GCAM for git add all commit, I think or add and then message. And so our message is gonna be added the audio path property. Uh, we'll go ahead and push this now. Uh, oh, need to set upstream. So git push set upstream. By the way, I'm using fig for IntelliSense in here that pops up, which is really neat. So it shows me my origin here. And then uh, we can uh, select the branch name that we're already on. Fig is awesome, you should check it out. So we'll go ahead and push this. That should push this to my GitHub repository. There we go. So that's added. The cool thing now is if we come back into uh, GraphBase and now go to our branches, you see that we now have a build going or a deploy going for our add audio path. Now, what's really amazing about this is this is going to be a completely separate environment with a completely different endpoint that we can hit to be able to test inside of that isolated environment by itself before we decide we're comfortable merging this branch into master. So GraphBase is integrating with your GitHub repository, specifically with your branching strategy, whatever that is and whatever works for you to make sure that you have isolated environments for testing before you actually merge everything to production. So we'll let this build finish and then we'll just take a look to show that it's, that it's there. All right, so this has been deployed. When I go into this deployment, what's really cool is it shows us exactly what has changed. So I have a visual idea of what's changed. Let's say someone else pushes to a new branch, it automatically comes in here. If I didn't work on that code, I can now come in and inspect this. It'll show me exactly what uh, what has changed. There's the playground for this this one. You can see the schema as well. You can see the history of deployments for this. Uh, now, after you decide that this thing is good, you can uh, now check uh, check out. So let's do uh, get checkout uh, main. We'll do or get checkout uh, master. Get uses master by default. I need to update that. Uh, we'll do git uh, merge of our add audio path. And now we will push that. Let's say we did our testing. We feel like everything is good. That's great. Uh, now, if we come back to our graph based demo, now if we come into our branches, you see there's a build going on in master, which is great. Uh, if we look at the schema, now this shows our audio path string. So all that stuff is taken care of us for us through graph based to be able to create and run a local GraphQL server. The only code that we had to write was for the actual schema model. I think we can probably take care of that. It takes care of building the server for us. It lets us run it locally, which is great. We can then deploy it by connecting it to a GitHub repository. And we have the ability to do separate environments by doing uh, branches in our GitHub repository, which we're probably doing anyway, or at least we probably should be doing anyway. Test that out before merging that back to master. So graph base for your serverless GraphQL backend in minutes with almost no work on your end is pretty sweet. Now, if you stuck around because you're interested in the script that I mentioned, I'll kind of walk you through this. Uh, so I just copied a bunch of files or a bunch of code into a Node.js app. If you're curious about how we're using Sanity and some of the code behind the scenes for the Compressed FM podcast, that repository is public on GitHub. So you can go and check that out. I'll include a link in the description below as well. So what I do is I write a query for, uh, for Sanity with grok so grok is a proprietary or it's it's actually created it's open source but it's created by sanity for being able to uh, query data and so we're going to query all episodes that are already published and then we're going to get the uh, different pieces of information here from the, each episode then we create a sanity client and uh, we use our client and we call dot fetch Interestingly, Sanity also has the ability to uh, query based on GraphQL, but since this was stuff that was already written and we're using Grok in the actual source code for the website, I just decided to do that. So we grab all of our episodes. Now with each episode, what do we do? Well, I'm using the GraphQL request. This is a simple node library for making GraphQL requests. I uh, define the endpoint. So when I was running locally, when I was uploading that data, it's just localhost 4000 slash GraphQL. And then I uh, added in my bear token uh, to, for authorization. So we create this GraphQL client. And now with each different episode that we iterate through, we get the title, description, cover, and episode number. We then run 
this mutation or create this mutation query with the GQL and then the backtick tags. And we say inside of here, we're going to pass in four variables for title, description, cover, and episode number. Again, that matches up with the properties that we have here. So we create this variables array that has title, description, cover, episode number. We then take our GraphQL client. We make a request by passing in the create episode mutation and then pass in those variables that it needs. And it makes that request for each one. Now, I know this is not the most optimal way to run asynchronous code inside of a for each. I'm not really worried about that. So if you want to talk about that in the comments, feel free. I'm just doing this as a demo thing. So uh, it does all the uh, grabbing the information out of Sanity and then uploads that to our GraphQL backend with GraphBase. So I think that was pretty cool. It was a cool tie in for me to get some good data that I care about for my own podcast into GraphBase to show you all the things that we just talked about. So GraphBase is super cool. I definitely recommend checking it out. You'll have a link in the description below to sign up for a free account to do all the stuff and follow along if you want to. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have anything else GraphQL related that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.